Hey, I'm Dr. Wilson. I'm a PhD molecular biologist, and welcome to another COVID debunking video. This week, I'm looking at a very stupid claim that just won't die. It's the idea that COVID vaccines change your DNA. They don't, but that hasn't stopped anti-vaxxers from lying any way they can about it to try to make it look like that's the case. And now it's going viral again thanks to people like Peter McCullough and Simone Gold two anti-vaccine liars that are just ridiculous. So in this video, I'm going to be going over what needs to be demonstrated in order to prove that the sequence in the mRNA COVID vaccines has been integrated into a human genome. And then I'm going to talk about why the paper that Peter McCullough and Simone Gold are referencing is totally garbage and how they're lying about it. So let's get started. There are a very specific set of experiments that you can choose from in order to demonstrate that the COVID mRNA vaccine sequence has been integrated into a host genome. Molecular biologists know how to do this. We have to do it regularly when we are manipulating the genomes of the cells that we work with. We have to make sure that any constructs that we're adding into the genome have actually been added into the genome. This includes specific PCR-based sequencing techniques in order to demonstrate that the sequence that you're trying to integrate is actually in the host genome by showing that it is flanked by host genome sequences. You could also do a whole genome sequence of the cell lines you're working with, or you could do something like a southern blot. The point to all of this is that there are a specific set of experiments that need to be done in order to demonstrate this. And the paper that Peter McCullough, Simone Gold, and others are referencing does not do those experiments. It does not show integration of the COVID mRNA sequence in a host cell. It doesn't show it at all. And if you hear any future claims of this happening, you should be asking the question, does the paper actually show integration into the host genome with any of these specific experiments? If it doesn't do that, you can dismiss it outright. But let's go into a little more detail about what these anti-vaxxers are actually saying and what the paper actually shows. The study that just came out of Sweden, that is just so alarming. The news is buzzing out of uh, Lund University, Malmo, Sweden. Marcus Alden is the first author. The first demonstration in a human hepatic or liver cell line that the Pfizer vaccine, in fact, reverse transcribes and installs DNA into the human genome. Actually, the paper only shows that first part. It does not show integration or installation, as Peter says, into the genome. So let's talk about this a little more in detail. The active material in the COVID mRNA vaccines is the mRNA. mRNA is made from DNA in a process called transcription. This requires a set of enzymes to read the DNA and turn it into a different molecule, which is RNA. The information in that RNA is then read by other cellular machinery in order to make proteins, which do a lot of the work in the cells. The mRNA itself is really transient. It doesn't last very long. It's only meant to be used as a copy of the information that is stored more permanently in DNA. So mRNA does not get replicated like DNA does. It does not get passed down from cell to cell like DNA does. It's just a temporary copy of the information. So in order for the information in the mRNA vaccines to become a permanent part of a host genome, it has to first be reverse transcribed. That means it has to be turned from mRNA back into DNA. And this takes work. It takes the work of enzymes to do this specific job. Once it gets reverse transcribed back into DNA, it then takes another set of enzymes to incorporate the DNA into a host genome. And the DNA usually has to have some specific characteristics that will help it get integrated into specific spots in the host genome. This paper that McCullough is referencing here only shows that first step of reverse transcription. And the researchers actually forced it to happen in unnatural conditions. Let me explain. Human cells don't have much reverse transcriptase activity. Reverse transcriptase just refers to enzymes that can turn mRNA back into DNA. Human cells don't do this much. But one of the enzymes that the human genome does encode that can do this is called line 1. Line 1 is a reverse transcriptase that usually just replicates itself. It has an affinity for its own sequence. But if it is present in high amounts, it can have off-target effects. So what the researchers did in this awful paper is they used a human liver cancer cell line, one that 
over expresses line one. It has way more copies of line one present than normal healthy cells. They then gave in the cell culture a large dose of mRNA that is normally put in the COVID vaccines. So we have a lot of mRNA, more than what we would have in a vaccine, and a lot of line one, way more than what we would have in our normal cells. And the researchers, unsurprisingly, measure reverse transcription of the mRNA that was given to these cells. And that is all that the paper shows. It does not show incorporation of the reverse transcribed DNA into the host genome. Not at all. The experiments aren't even there to look for it. But I have a suspicion that the authors actually did those experiments to look for integration, didn't find any integration, and just didn't care to report it. They just published their paper as it is, knowing how it would be received by anti-vaxxers, and they didn't care. And the predatory journal that it was published in, MDPI, likely gave them little resistance at all when they were publishing. And yet, McCullough and his anti-vaccine grifter friends are all parading this paper as if it shows that we are all genetically modified organisms now or something. It is absolutely ridiculous. I'm not even kidding. They're actually claiming that. Here, look. So the, one of the fun things about the last couple of years being a doctor and lawyer is this is a very interesting opportunity. And I think we're going to be bringing another lawsuit <laughs> because there's actually federal law that you cannot discriminate against people for genetic, discrim de genetic discriminations. I forgot the acronym. I think it's GINA, G-I-N-A. GINA. GINA, right? So this now opens the door to saying that if you're not allowing somebody in who chose not to get the shot, that you're actually engaging in genetic discrimination. So I think there's oh, wow. this Sweden mm -hmm. study, I think, opens the door to a new type of lawsuit. Yeah, no, that is just cuckoo bananas. Not only does the paper not even remotely show that, but that lawsuit is absolutely ridiculous and would get thrown out of court. It's just a waste of time. But it's not surprising that this is coming from Simone Gold, who just got out of jail. If you're pregnant and you have this done, can that then affect your baby? Yes, yeah, see, see, this is the alarming finding. The CDC says on its website very explicitly, this will not change your DNA. Because it doesn't. It doesn't change your DNA. The paper that came out of Sweden. Now, there'll so be many more to confirm that. it. The first and thing. the steps are to A, confirm it, to confirm that the entire code is installed, and then to actually confirm that it's expressed, meaning that the spike protein now is continuously expressed from human cells. But because the lipid nanoparticles are taken up everywhere, that means somatic cells in your organs, but also your uh, gametocytes, actually the cells that actually are the sperm and the egg, if yeah. they are carrying it, that indeed means that in fact it could be passed to the daughter cells and so and, that could uh, be embryo. Um, and this is the whole point of their lies they are trying to muster up fear about the vaccines they're making these absolutely ridiculous statements that have no bearing in the scientific literature and they're parading them as truth all to scare people in order to not take vaccines it's blatant fear mongering for their own personal political gains so just to recap, there are two major steps that a cell needs to do in order to integrate an RNA sequence into its genome as DNA. There are other steps in between, but for simplicity's sake, I'm just focusing on these two major steps. The first step is reverse transcription. The mRNA has to be turned back into DNA. This is not an easy task, and the researchers had to really force it to happen in their cell culture conditions that they were working with. This would not normally happen in your body after a vaccination. The second and most important step is the actual integration of the DNA into the host genome. This is a tall order for cells. Not only does it require certain enzymes that aren't usually present in human cells, but it also will require some certain characteristics of the DNA itself. It has to have some matching regions flanking its ends that help it actually recombine and integrate into the host genome. None of that is present in the context of COVID mRNA vaccines. Without those components, it can't happen. COVID mRNA vaccines will not change your DNA. The components aren't there. It's not going to happen. You don't need to be afraid of it. And sure enough, we don't see any evidence of this happening in animal models or in humans. From all of the data we've gathered, the mRNA and the spike protein stay mostly within the injection site of the vaccination. And after a few weeks, all those components are faded away and gone because they are transient. They are not being 
permanently incorporated anywhere. But hey, since when do anti-vaxxers care about actual data? They don't. They never have and never will. They're just going to keep lying about it. But hopefully you can stay informed enough to not fall for their lies and actually listen to the science and the data that scientists work so hard to reproduce. Well, that's going to do it for this week's video. As always, all of the links to all of the science that I talk about in this video are going to be in the description below so that you can check this out for yourself, educate yourself, and not fall for the lies that anti-vaxxers tell. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to like it and subscribe so that you can catch me next week where I'll be debunking some more funky stuff. See you then.